So what does it take to become unionized? You have to be bonded for sure. So you have to qualify for a bond. And then uh, there's a minimum amount that they require. Um, and then pretty much an interview. And it just depends on them to say yes or no. And then I imagine there's oversight there as well. So if people have complaints and stuff like that, the Absolutely. union yes. acts yes. as an oversight. Right. Yes, for sure. Um, there's a board, a committee, everything all involved. And plus, if you look nationwide, you have local unions all over the place. Electrical, plumbing, HVAC, elevators, carpenters. So they're just all over the place. And that's something I think some of us outside of the trade network, because I, I did real estate as well and, and my... My main focus was getting someone that would show up and do the price that was reasonable so we don't really think of the unions. And you guys attacked starting a new business from a different angle. You said, you know, it's not the cheapest to go union, but we see the benefits in it, especially from the commercial standpoint. So you guys jumped right into that. How has that worked out, getting commercial jobs? How are you leveraging that to? We are seeing more commercial jobs come in, which is amazing. You know, uh, it's not where we want to be. Uh, exactly just yet, but we are only a year and a half into this. So, um, but we have be seen the benefits of being union and the commercial jobs coming in. Hmm. So how do you guys stand out? I, obviously you're union, but how else, as far as services you guys provide? Really, the biggest thing is, uh, showing up. <laughs> <laughs> Huge. Isn't that interesting that we've come to a point in, in our culture where a big deal is just showing up? Yeah, showing up and then a lot of integrity. Like I tell my customers, I, I'd rather build relationships than customers because customers are all over the place. But having a relationship is something different. So for us, I'd rather try to build a relationship with everybody we meet. So that way we understand their problems, what they're going on. And let's figure out a way to satisfy them so that way they will have confidence in other plumbers or us to come back and do some more additional work for them. Yeah, and there's – so talk about services just real quick. I think – speaking of relationship, because there are things that really should be done maybe every year or even maybe maybe more than once a year as part of maintaining your home when it comes to plumbing. What would some of those things be? Uh, you could have like your backflow tests. Um, backflows, you have them in your irrigation systems, throughout your commercial buildings to be able to protect your potable water from contamination or cross-contamination. So you got different backflows that are really key factors in your residential and commercial industry. And, and those are required to be checked annually. Once a year. And then for some commercial buildings, yes, you have a bunch of grease waste, and those need to be either hydro jet every three months or every six months, depending on how big that facility is. What about um, like tech, uh, water pressure testing? Is that something too? Or? Yes, your water pressure, you could always get a hose bib gauge. Like I tell people at Home Depot, they're only about 11, 15 bucks. Grab it, stick it on your first hose bib in uh, front of your property, and you'll be able to see your PSI. Your PSI should be ranged between 35 and 80 at the max. If you're above 80 PSI, then that means your PRV is already gone bad. Okay. And it could affect all the seals through everything in your house yep. and all your fixtures. And water heaters, too. People don't realize that you can flush out your water heater to preserve their life, you know. Um, so that's um, that's a good thing. What would you recommend for them to Oh, uh, It's do? pretty simple. Just get um, normal, your wife, girlfriend's pantyhose, <laughs> cut it, <laughs> tie it to your water hose at the end of it, and you'll see how much calcium comes out. If barely any calcium's inside that little pocket sleeve that you just made, then you know you're flushing it well. If it has a lot of calcium, then you know you need to flush it a little more frequently. Hmm. How often should you be doing it on average? Typically, it's about once a year. Okay. And that's a flush, not a drain, right? That is correct. Yeah, I've heard people call it, and I actually got corrected by a plumber one time. Mm -hmm. He's like, you don't drain it, Mark. I'm just, it's Pedro. Uh, uh, Tito, sorry, Tito. Tito. Yeah, he's, you don't drain it, Mark. You, uh, he's got a, a Puerto Rican accent. He's a great guy, but uh, you got to flush it, right? Which means you keep water pressure going. That is it. correct. You don't empty it out. Yes, and if they're going to empty it out, if it's an electrical water heater, I suggest unplugging it or killing the power to it so you don't burn your elements. 
See, I'm a big proponent of not DIYing stuff that's more than a certain <laughs> amount of money. So I just pay somebody to do that because um, I don't know what I'm doing when it comes to my water heaters, right? I'm curious, though, like in real estate. So you have a background in that. When it comes to the commercial side, residential side, generally, you know, I, I was in the residential. So you could sell sell pretty much any size house. The process was mostly the same. But when it starts getting into commercial in real estate, it really matters. Is it retail? Is it industrial? Is it multifamily? Is it what size is it when it comes to that kind of stuff? Is it the same in plumbing if you're coming into a building that is used for like it's um, a restaurant or if it's a big office building or if it's being used for industrial? Yes, Do you need to specialize code. in those different type of areas? Do you need to specialize? N- not necessarily. If you know the code, you can pretty much work on anything, right? Um, but Pedro comes from a background of commercial mm. plumbing, you know, Um That's what he was in the union for was strictly commercial. Oh, wow. But uh, when he was my plumber, he did a bunch of residential. So he got the experience of both worlds. But to specifically have a dedicated, because like in real estate, you have a dedicated uh, name to it, right? Yeah. Um, But here in plumbing, you don't. So it's really um, what you're comfortable doing, you know. And and luckily for us, we've had the experience in both spectrums. So we're... We're pretty, pretty uh, knowledgeable. Because what I found in real estate is every once in a while you'll get a real, like a residential agent who will stumble into a commercial deal. Right. And they don't know what they don't know, which, you know, they'll work as hard as they can. But I would not try to sell a commercial deal, even with all of my knowledge of real estate, because I just don't know what questions to ask. I don't know what I don't know. So I would imagine that's so important in the plumbing even (laughs) even more well, you know a good example would be our son who's a first year apprentice right now like um he's getting some commercial experience with us right because we're taking on commercial jobs but um he's mostly in the residential right mm-hmm. so we've talked about letting him go and going to go work for another plumbing company to get the experience that does strictly commercial so that he could get the experience you know pete has 15 years of experience but I mean, he's just in this for not even a year yet, and he's been exposed to more residential than he has commercial. Mm-hmm. So what's, we've talked about that. What's his thoughts on you letting him go? You're not going to fire him? <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I don't I think don't he likes the idea, but... Uh, I think on some days when uh, him and dad are not getting along, he likes the idea. <laughs> <laughs> Would he take a pay cut? <laughs> no, 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 no. We're all Our pay is so, all the way straight so across the, the board. Yeah, the union, oh, you know exactly so what So he would go to another union company? <laughs> yes, right. yes, for sure. All right, cool. And right. still make the same amount of money as he's doing with us or even more, depending, because we only stick to a 40-hour week. Uh, once in a great while, we do work on Saturdays and Sundays. Mm. But for him working now. Uh, for instance, another big union contractor, they'll be working Monday through Sunday sometimes. Right, because they're looking to put up a whole building and, you know, they're meeting deadlines. So they have to, you know, work more um, because we are family owned and operated. We prefer to work the 40 hour weekday so we still have our family time. But we are available and have, you know, plumbers available for emergency services. So when it comes to you guys' success so far, what are some like key points of your success that you guys maybe have experienced and and why i say the experience of working together for sure um maybe (laughs) (laughs) that's the challenging part everybody knowing their place (laughs) (laughs) well yeah i I think a a family in this respect is like a business right as long as the roles are defined and people are doing what they need to be doing then things run smooth it should it should but you know then you have you know Pete is very passionate about what he does. I mean, extremely passionate about what he does. And I think that is one of the biggest, biggest uh, reasons why we've succeeded this far. Um, and um, and my position is um, selling him to people. So, and it doesn't take me very much. I mean, I really admire what he does. And I admire that he has extreme um, passion and integrity doing what he does. I mean, the reviews that come in and, you know, having to speak to a customer on the phone for an hour raving about your husband is pretty amazing <laughs> you know what I mean? um <clears throat> but um we tried to i think the success is also trying to find a true balance um because sometimes someone will be up at eight o'clock at night wanting to put me to work and i'm like um i'm sorry i clocked out at five o'clock <laughs> <laughs> yeah but a lot of our big success does come to as well by when we get phone calls instead of me charging two three hundred dollars to go out to your house I will kind of walk you through it over the phone. 
And not too many plumbing companies will do that. And like I said, I'd rather build relationships. So if I could save you a few hundred dollars for us not even showing up, then why not? That's the blessing that we're able to give to people. Yeah. So one of the things that, that I always hear in the, the entrepreneurial world, right, is success is simple, but it's not easy. How has that shown up in y'all's business so far? Um, okay, so uh, we are a small business, and so um, when we're doing bigger jobs, you know, 